Hi guys, so this video is a little bit special. It's it's about my my process. I guess so. It's about my process of developing film at home, but uh, I want to develop slide films. So I have developed slides. I have developed slides films before, uh, but that was when I was in Hastings and I had the CP2 machine that I no longer have. So I was thinking, is there a way that I could still develop ASICs at home without needing like a big machine? And I started scouting and I found some interesting ways of getting around it. So this video is about developing uh, slide films in 4x5 and 120 and we wanted to take some pictures to see first to see if the uh, slides were working and secondly to see if I could develop in a home. Now during the process I messed up and I did not wash the uh, positives after the first development so the colors are not exactly as they should be but they work so <laughs> follow me on that process and once that's done I'm gonna explain to you how I develop films using a tank and not actually developing by hand so I hope you enjoyed this video let's go welcome uh, today I want you to experiment something with me uh, I purchased this uh, film for 4x5 cameras and it's a Kodak Ektachrome 6121 and it's expired it's an old film and it's been sitting on my freezer for a while and I want to shoot it but I have no idea if it's still working or what ISO should I use on this thing. So today I will experiment. I have loaded uh, four sheets of film in these 4x5 holders and I will take pictures of Fran uh, who's behind the camera. Hi guys. Each holder can take two uh, sheets, that's what it is for. I'll take two pictures with this lens. Uh, and then I'll take two other pictures with a Dalmater Pentac, which is a really old beetle lens that I have and it's super low contrast and this film is really low in contrast. So I'm experimenting. This is the difference between how it looks inside the camera and now I'll show you how it is outside. Oh man, it's so bright. I mean outside is super bright and inside the camera is so dark. All right, let's take a picture. And hello, welcome to my kitchen. I want to keep the experiment going and develop more film, uh, more slide film at home. So for this uh, new batch, I have four rolls of uh, slide film in 120. So it's two rolls of Belvia 50, one roll of Ektachrom 64, and you can tell but this is one roll of uh, Ektachrom 160 tungsten base film. So I want to develop these four films and I want to do it at home and in the cheapest, fastest and easiest way possible. So in order to make this happen, I'm gonna use the <laughs> drum roll. This Jobo drum is right here. Uh, and it's, it's fairly easy, I'm just gonna use it like this. I had a cup, but I, I will need to remove this part of the tank and I, I'm not able to do it, so I'm just gonna use it like so and see what happens. I made some tests with water and it doesn't spill if I use it like so, so it should be good to go. It took me some time, but I was able to find these reels. These are the large reels. Up to this point, I've always been developing with small reels and now I finally have this uh, big ones and I'm gonna use these four reels stacked like so. I'll place them inside the tank using of course the uh, column in the middle. So this, I mean the four of them will go inside the tank and then I'll cover them and I will develop. 
my cat is crying. Uh, how will I agitate this? Uh, this is the interesting part. I found this machine online. This is the Color by Bessler. It's a motor based and it's super simple. It's just a motor and the motor rotates this things and it will agitate for me. So I have to place the tank in this direction and then just develop. That's all I have to do. This is definitely the easiest and small solution, which is important because since I now I live in a small apartment in New York City, I need to save as much space as I can. So I can purchase a CP2 machine and just develop it with the big machine. Even though it's super convenient, I need to downsize my darkroom equipment. So this is my way to go. So yeah, I will just develop with this and I'll show you the results and I hope it works out. Let's go. These are the chemicals that I'm going to use, but I need to heat them up first. So pouring some water in here, make them warmer. All right, so I have the water heated at 100 Fahrenheit, which is the temperature, and we will begin the pre-soaking. And now we activate. All right, and take one minute. In the meantime, I'll check the temperatures for the developer. Oh, oh, shoot. This is extreme developing. First developer. It says rinse seven times in quick succession. So what I will do is I'll place it over here. Wait a few seconds because I need to place this back where it belongs. I'm gonna do this, I guess, I don't know, two, three times. This method of using this thing, it's actually quite useful. Uh, I was not sure it was gonna work when I first purchased it, but I think it works pretty fine. Uh, the only thing I'm not a big fan of right now is that I need to keep pushing this tank on like to that side because otherwise as you can see it, it moves towards this direction uh, which if I'm around here it's not a big issue but this thing means I can't just leave I don't know why it's doing that there's this thing over here in which I can adjust the uh, level of the machine and move it to the side but then it keeps moving to that's the, this direction and I don't want to tilt it too much because I don't want to have uneven results in the film. So, I don't know, I'm just experimenting, guys. So far, I think it works great. Let's see how it goes. This should be for four and a half minutes and we are on the almost four and a half minutes mark. Let's go. It's amazing how much the chemicals change with every time you use them. They get darker and darker. Now let's move to the washing. Get the bleaks ready now. Whee! So the bleaks should be there for six and a half minutes at 100 Fahrenheit, but since my chemicals are not exactly at 100 Fahrenheit, I'm gonna leave it a little bit more. I'm gonna leave it seven minutes and something just to make sure I'm compensated for the lack of temperature. Okay, so I think we're ready. It's time to pour this back in. And now we have to wash this. The instruction says this needs to be washed for seven minutes of running water. I think it's an excess. Let's remove the water. Whee! Right, so the one on the top is the one I'm most interested in seeing if it works because this is, as you can see, it's right over the lid. So it's not completely covered by the pillar so i don't know if it was properly developed or not that's the one i'm gonna check out first let's see ah. all right it's a bit underexposed but that's just my fault you know it actually looks pretty good And so I develop a lot of uh, E6 films at home. As you can see, well, this is one of the former shoot film episodes. Can you see it? These are, I don't know, man. I have developed not, not too many, but quite a lot of slight films. Uh, and all of this was developed at home with the same kit. So 
it works. It actually works. I'm super excited about that. Uh, that was one of my biggest fears when I left uh, Hastings and I moved to New York that I will not be able to keep developing slide films because I was using the CP2 machine and I thought that was basically the only way of making it. But then I saw other people on YouTube developing in more brute ways than using the super cool machine and I thought, well, maybe I could do it too. And you can actually do it. It's super easy. As an end note, my recommendations for developing at home some A6 films would be to be consistent with the development and yeah, try to agitate as much as possible, even if that means agitating by hand. When I developed these films, uh, these sheets of film of E6, I developed them by hand, as you saw in the video, but I now purchase some holders so I can develop this with a tank and, and just use the rotary development as normal. And I can develop, instead of four at a time, I can develop 12 at a time, if I so desire. So that's pretty cool. Now the issue that I've found is that specifically the the Jobo or Hobo <laughs> um, tanks that I've been using are not really cheap. So th those are kind of expensive. The good thing is that once you find the film holders and once you, once you have the tank, you can use just one liter of solution and develop a lot of rolls at the same time or a lot of negatives or positives at the same time. So that's pretty good. Um, I was used to using the Patterson tanks in which you need to fill them up from the top and you need a lot of chemicals to make that happen. But the Hobo or Jobo tanks, you put them on the side and then you develop them like that. And you don't really need more than a liter if you're gonna develop even, I don't know, up to eight rolls of 120 with just one liter of solutions. That's crazy to me. <laughs> that's magical. So I think that's pretty nice, especially if you're developing in a small apartment like I am. So. My advice will be try to scout for some tanks that will work for you. I'm not going to recommend go and buy some Hobo or Jobo tanks because they're kind of expensive, but uh, maybe find out if you want to develop some slide film and you can purchase, you can even purchase like a small regular tank, like a small Patterson tank and develop one or two rolls at a time. Um, that can also work. The chemicals are not crazy expensive, but they're not cheap either. So uh, another recommendation, if I can suggest something is shoot a lot of slide film beforehand. And then once you have a stock of 10 or 12 rolls that you need to develop, then you can purchase the chemicals. If, if you can stock up like to 20 rolls or something, that'll be stellar because then you won't be forced to keep shooting and shooting in order to, you know, use the chemistry that you already purchased. So that would be my suggestion. And I guess that's it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoyed what I had to show you, like developing in a really simple way at home. Uh, I hope it was useful for you. And I guess that's all I have to say. I'll see you pretty soon in the next episode. I want to thank a lot to my patrons because they've been supporting this channel even through my hard times of university university and it, that's been awesome thanks a lot to my patrons they are the best and uh if you want to be part of the patreon group just uh join the link um giving away cameras every single month or film stuff or flashes or whatever i can find and it's interesting um thank you so much for everyone thanks a lot for sticking by and i'll stop saying thanks because it's turning cringy so <laughs> and i'll see you next one uh take care and keep shooting guys Thank you.